Can you please give me an example? Because I'm not really sure how we would be using helical piles, for example, on a project I'd want to start. OK. So I'll give you a really good example so you understand helical piles. So let's go with a very standard deck on your home that is attached to your house. OK? So here's your home, your house. We'll have a 24 by 24 deck. It's relatively large as far as decks go, but it's well within the realm of being standard. So because of the elevated capacity for compression and tension numbers with a helical pile, if we wanted to do a very exaggerated example, we could put this whole deck on one helical pile. We could use a larger helical pile, easily a four and a half inch helical pile, right in the middle, and it would have more than enough capacity to support this whole structure. Is it practical? No, of course it's not. Because the understructure that would be required to stop any bounce, to control the balance, et cetera, et cetera, would far outweigh any cost savings you would have by using only one pile. OK, let's continue with this example. If we went a little farther with this example, we could easily support this deck again with only two piles, one on each corner. Again, not an issue at the helical pile because the capacities are so high. But what becomes the issue is this very large span we have. We would probably need a four or five two by 12 structure bolted together to stop any bounce, which would be very, very expensive. So a really good compromise, a really good starting point, if you will, if you're thinking about designing a deck, uh, a home foundation, a manufactured home foundation, a shed, pretty much any structure that, that needs a foundation can be installed on helical piles. And a really good starting point for what we call pile spacing, the distance between the piles, is eight feet. That's a very good starting point because that's always a very good compromise between size and cost of the structure and the pile itself. In the helical pile world, it's cheaper to have more smaller piles than it is to have fewer large piles. Because as you can imagine, when you go to larger piles, everything is relative. The piles are larger. The equipment we need to install the piles are larger. The equipment we need to transport the equipment we need to install is larger, et cetera, et cetera. So everything gets exponentially more expensive. So eight feet is a really good starting point for your helical pile. So in this example, instead of having one, like in my exaggerated example, we would probably have 12 1 and 7 eighths, for instance. It's, it's much, uh, um, much cheaper as far as the structure because we don't have these huge spans. And it's relatively cheap as well for helical piles as opposed to one ginormous helical pile. Now, when we're talking about the actual placement of the piles, the placement can be, if you can imagine, exactly as it would be for a traditional sub or pad fa foundation or footing under your deck. The placement would be exactly the same for your deck builder. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes much more sense. Excellent.